there's burgers and there's burgers and there's Manu's burgers with peppercorn sauce Bonjour everyone, my Facebook friend, my Instagram friend. It's time for another recipe from Manu with the sauce by Manu. All right, so um, I was just saying, there's burgers, there's burgers, and it's my burger. And the idea of the burger that I got is basically, I've seen those videos of the burgers being dipped into this melty cheese. And I thought, what the heck? It's a bit too much. So I thought maybe instead of dipping into the melted cheese, dip it in the peppercorn sauce. So I'm gonna build a burger, like simple burger, uh, beef patty, caramelized onion, Swiss cheese, not normal cheese, the Swiss cheese is really nice and European style, bacon, and then I'm gonna boil some peppercorn sauce, pour it over it, and all of that together, mm, it's gonna be delicious. Let's get on with it. So I did mention that there will be a caramelized onion in my burger. So I'm going to start with the caramelized onion because it's going to take longer to caramelize the onions than to cook everything else. So I've got two onions here, slice in half. And obviously that little piece that attach the rings together, I'm going to take it off. So when you slice the onion that way, it all comes apart. If you don't take this little bit off, then onions will stay together. All right? Sharp knife. You don't want to slice them too thin because when you caramelize them, uh, they might just disappear in the pan. So you want a bit of crunch still. We never talk too much about knife uh, techniques, but I, I'd like to explain uh, this one. And you, you may think that we chefs are just born knowing how to slice very quickly, but the technique is pretty simple. Is you use your, your nail of your middle finger there uh, as a guard, but you're not actually putting the blade on your finger, but more on as a guard. So the finger moves before you slice. And the two first, the 2000 first onions are the hardest, but then you, you start to get the speed. As you go like this, back and forth, Every time I slice, my fingers goes back a couple of millimeters, if you know what I'm saying. And as you know how to do it better, you just then faster. All right, so pan is on, medium heat, um, caramelized onions. Uh, doesn't want a high heat because you're gonna burn them before they caramelize. So a little bit of oil and a little bit of butter. All right, and then I'm gonna put the onions straight in. Gonna give them a, a quick shake, get that butter melting. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. When you build a burger, you've got, everything needs to have a, a, a seasoning. Because if you don't put the seasoning in the onion, then suddenly you've got a bit of a lack of flavor in between and you don't know what's going on here. So a bit of salt, a bit of pepper always, all right? So those are gonna caramelize gently, slowly, keep an eye on it, all right? As I say, you don't want too much heat underneath. You want them to wilt and then shrivel and then caramelize and then the sweetness of the onions really comes out and that's what's really good in a burger. All right, so I'm gonna leave this Leave this alone, and let's talk about the meat. So, minced beef. I wouldn't buy the just the, the normal mince that you find in supermarket. Okay, this is, usually it's pretty lean in fat, uh, so the flavor profile is probably really down, uh, and then it's gonna become really dry. And that's why a lot of people use that type of mince, and then they put eggs in it and then onions and garlic and salt and pepper and some breadcrumbs and so on. If you have the right mince, you don't need to put anything in it. It's about the mixture of two that I prefer and, and I think it's, the knowledge is pretty out there now. It's 80% of chuck. So chuck is a piece of beef that usually that you braise because it's really chewy 
or you mince it and it's got a great flavor and texture. And then about 20% of brisket. Now brisket is the same, it's a piece of meat that you braise for a very long time and it becomes really juicy and it's got a beautiful amount of fat in it. If you mince those two together and keep them chunky, not, not minced but chunky, uh, you get the best burger patty. Now all you have to do is ask your butcher. Usually now the butchers just have the patty already, not done but in, in the bowl uh, um, size. Um, or apparently, uh, my friend behind the camera, Matt, told me that the supermarket are doing the 78, 21 or something, the, the percentage of those two cuts of mint for you already, so it's pretty good. All right, so again, just mix your onions every now and then, keep an eye on it, otherwise they may be burning, all right? Um, as I say, there's nothing into this. It's plain chuck and brisket, 80% to 20% mix. And I've got a couple of rings there. Uh, the ring is just to gauge uh, the portion control and the shape of my burger. All right. Now, if you look at this patty size, it's about the same as my brioche roll. It needs to be a little larger. So you're gonna press on it to make it thinner and larger. The reason why is as you put it in the pan, it will shrink and then puff up. And another trick that my cameraman just taught me is if you actually push it down like this and put a thumbprint right in the middle, then when it cooks, that thumbprint will disappear um, and won't bulge up on top, basically. So thank you, Matt. You learn every day. All right. Voila. Also, putting Manu's thumbprint in the burger means it's mine. Uh, and by the way, I suggest before you start playing with your meat, wash your hands. So basically, there's a, if you want to use only one pan to do your burger, there's an order of doing things. Uh, you don't want to cook your patty first because then by the time you cook your bacon uh, and then put the cheese on it, it's going to get cold and the cheese is going to get rubbery. So what I do is the onions takes the longest to cook, so I cook the onions first. Then the bacon can basically get crispy and then sit on the side and keep warm. It won't matter into the burger. And then your patty goes in, salt and pepper, then your cheese goes in, then you're ready to build. Capish? For me, I love using the streaky bacon because the streaky bacon's got a beautiful amount of fat. That's what's gonna crisp. That's where the flavor in the bacon is, is that fat. So the pan is hot already. And I'm not gonna use any oil because that fat's gonna render and it's gonna basically cook in its own fat. Like this. Bacon is probably one of my favorite things to eat. I, I, to a point that a lot of people ask me, what would, be, what would be your last meal before you die? And I think a bacon sandwich will be it. The streaky bacon is basically, the bacon has got that big shortcut like this and then the long bits. That's the long bit of the whole piece of the bacon. This is pretty lean and dries out when you cook it versus the streaky bacon. It's got a bit of fat and then it crisps pretty good. See that? That's what you want. This crispy brown is what you want. So again, you don't want to cook it in too high temp, just medium. A lot of people seem to always crank the heat up to cook stuff. You don't have to, you gotta be patient. So I, I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't put any oil whatsoever. And what I'm left with here is bacon fat. And bacon fat is gonna help me to toast my burger bun. Mm, you know, you don't, I know some people just put it again on, on a grill or a flat plate or under the salamander or whatever. Just use the, the flavors that you've got here. Bacon fat, why not use it, all right? 
All right, so this is not hard yet, but by the time it cools down a little bit, it's gonna harden up. See that? That is delicious bacon. So burger buns, there's many different types. There's just the plain white breads, if you want, that's fine. Milk bun, uh, soft, delicious. Potato bun is actually, I think, my favorite. Uh, it's, but it's quite soft, so when you eat a burger, it can be quite messy. And this is brioche. Brioche, quite French, I suppose. Uh, and uh, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it, which I really enjoy. And it holds its shape a little bit more, all right? Especially when you've got kids. So all you have to do, get them in half, and in the bacon fat, people. The bacon fat. Here we go. That makes a difference between a burger and an amazing burger. All right. Okay, look at that. It's been in there two seconds. See, it soaked the fat and it's beautiful toasted. You. And my pan is clean as well. All right. Look at those onions. Slightly caramelized, I can do a little bit better than that. All right, so I've turned the heat right down. If you look at it, the heat is barely there. Not gonna burn anymore, but I'm just gonna, I want them to wilt a little bit more and caramelize a little bit more. There's still some that are missing a bit of color, yeah? In the meantime, we're gonna heat up some of the peppercorn sauce by Manu. Now, if you don't want peppercorn, you can use the mushroom sauce on this, you can use the Diane sauce on this, and if you order from Delish Delivery, you can have the red wine sauce on this. And squeeze. Just had it. Bacon's crispy, the onions are caramelized, the sauce is on, my cheese is ready to rock, I just need to go to cook the patties and here we go. Bit of oil. And a bit of butter. So the oil is for the heat, the butter is for the flavor. Mm. Salt and pepper on the patties. Be generous. And on the other side as well. Yeah. Boom. And don't be scared about putting pepper on it because it goes with pepper sauce. So the more heat, the better. Now, I know I ramble about it all the time, but I need to pass the message every time I do a recipe. Those sauces are made differently than anything else on the market. It's fresh, made with real ingredients. In here you've got onions, garlic, thyme, black peppercorn, green peppercorn, white wine, stock, cream, like it's the real thing. And where do you find it? Not with the rest of the crap on the market, but in the fridge with the meat, all right? So when you go to Woolies, go to the meat section, right in the top corner there, you've got me and put me in your basket. So don't play with your meat too much, okay? Keep it on one side for a bit so it caramelizes. All the beautiful uh, dice of fat through that means it's gonna caramelize and that's what you want. That's what the flavor is, okay? So I'll show you. Here, see those? All these crispy bits there? That's what you want. All right. Now, what's good when you do your own burger at home, you can choose the way you want it. I like mine pretty crispy on the outside and rare in the middle. You can have it medium rare, you can have it well done. You choose versus going to a, sh a shop, usually it's done one way and one way only. All right, so now I've turned my uh, patties around. I'm gonna put the cheese, which is Swiss cheese, uh, quite different to the American cheese. It's got a little bit more flavor, um, but it's got that melting uh, happening as well, which I love. All right, so I'm gonna switch it off because it's pretty much cooked. 
hands. I need to put a lid on it just to melt the cheese. I don't have a lid on it. I don't have a lid. All right. So do that, that, and just that for a couple of minutes just to melt the cheese. Now it's time to build a burger. Okay, so now, you know how baristas usually uh, are a bit wanky about their coffee? Well, the burger people are a little bit like this about how to build a burger. I don't think there's a way. I think you build your burger the way you want to build your burger. So for me, I'm gonna put a little bit of mayo on the base of my burger, just to season uh, the cost lettuce that I'm gonna put next. So it's not blends, but I don't wanna to put too much because then I'm gonna put peppercorn sauce over the top of the burger. So you don't wanna have the two different flavors uh, fighting against each other. All right, so next, uh, after this uh, mayo, we're gonna put some cost lettuce, baby cost, I like the baby cost. It's smaller, it's crispier. All right, I'm gonna do this like this, yeah. So that gives you freshness, it gives you crunchiness, and it's just absolutely delicious. Now, do we want to put the onions first, or do we want to put the onions on the burger? I'm going to put the onions first. As I say, there's no rules for me. You've got a crispy lettuce, fresh, then you've got a beautiful, soft, welted, caramelized onion, which are nice and sweet. Look at that. Mm. I mean, if you're not hungry after watching this, I bet you you're gonna run to Woolies and buy some menu sauce. All right? Next stage is to put the patty on the onions, with melted cheese. Woo! You know why I made two? It's gonna be one for me and one for Matt behind the camera. Always think about your, guy, your team. Okay, bacon, crispy, over the top, yum. Yum. Like this. I don't like when the, when the bacon hangs out of the burger, so that's why I break it a little bit. It stays in. It's looking absolutely delicious, if I can say so myself. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either pour the sauce over, or you can close it like so. And as I said to you earlier on, when those burgers are dipped in cheese, liquid cheese, you can go like this. Mm. Burger by menu with the peppercorn sauce by menu. Bon appétit.